Floor is all yours, Mark. Hi, everybody. Uh, Debbie, thank you for that very kind introduction. Um, I really appreciate that and hope I can live up to all that hype. So we want to talk about creating sustainably performance-driven lubricant offerings in a variety of different market segments. We're going to try a little bit of a different approach today, and hopefully um, you can extract some very useful information. So we all know that a little bit of mineral oil, petroleum oil spilled into the environment can cause a real problem. But I'm not sure anybody realizes that one gallon can contaminate a million, over 4 million gallons of water. And it can cost somewhere between 160 to $200 per gallon to clean up. And if you do the math, which is pretty simple, that's very expensive. So today we'll explore the trends in regulations, legislations, and sustainability driving the changes across five specific industries. But they can be applicable to virtually any industry. So the industries we'll be focusing on today will be mining, agriculture and forestry, power, construction, and marine. Within each of these market sectors, we'll look at challenges and opportunities, as well as some of the practical steps that you can take to advance sustainability goals and why environmentally acceptable lubricants or EALs should be part of the strategy to reduce the impact um, on the environment. So a little bit of interesting data, 40% four in 10 CEOs say that they have been able to drive revenue growth through sustainable practices with 35% highlighting their ability to make cost reductions which give them a competitive edge. An international survey of C-suite executives, uh, 69, almost 70% of leaders said they have a comprehensive organization-wide strategy in place uh, for making profit while positively contributing to society. The potential of EAL, environmentally acceptable lubricants, is often overlooked. A simple switch in this area can unlock long-term benefits and one of the many ways companies can maintain their license to operate their equipment um, in, 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 in stakeholder environments. Around the world, the shift towards more sustainable business practices is underway. In many countries, new regulations and standards are changing how companies retain and strengthen not only their license to operate, but also their competitive edge. Add to this public consensus, the need to show improved environmental impact of the industry is growing. 60% of people believe that addressing climate change is more important to them than, than, than it was a year ago. There's also a push of accountability amongst business leaders. Two thirds of people believe CEOs, senior executives should take the lead on change rather than wait for governments to impose change on them. We've seen this with the recent court order that Shell received to cut emissions by by half. The United Nations has a list of sustainable development goals. Um, they are the SDGs, and they're a major driving force uh, which influences sourcing, distribution, and consumption of, of uh, natural resources. The IMO, the Maritime International Maritime Organization, has implemented string, stringent regulations for discharge of oil into the ocean especially in protected areas like the Arctic. Sustainability will become much more of an environmental concern. It will become the core fabric of an industry that will generate additional value and increased resilience. So what should businesses be doing to advance sustainable operations from a lubricant perspective? You know, it's still very unclear uh, the environmental lubricant definitions were unclear back when green was a color, and we still don't know what bio-based content means or biodegradability, toxicity, performance, bioaccumulations. So what we really need to do is to develop a common language. Environmentally acceptable lubricants uh, will become an important component for addressing sustainabilities in a variety of, uh, of sectors. Um, and we'll focus first on the, um, the off-road sector. Bio-based technology improvements. So what's happening? 
Well, number one is we need to have improved performance. And following all the way behind that, we've improved uh, formulations. Formulations are specifically designed uh, with the equipment in mind. We focus on compatibility with components. Uh, we've improved the applications. What we wanna do, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later on, is make sure we have the right product for the right application and environmentally lubricant manufacturers or environmentally acceptable lubricant manufacturers are working much more closely with the equipment manufacturers, some of whom have developed years of, of proven field performance. So as I mentioned, the EAL markets we'll focus on today are mining, construction, agriculture, power, and the maritime industry. So first starting off with mining, uh, currently mining accounts for up to 4% of total energy consumption while being responsible for up to 7% of greenhouse, for, uh, greenhouse gas emissions on a worldwide basis. It is a wider impact throughout the, the value chain is also under scrutiny. 60, <clears throat> excuse me, 63% of mining executives view the license to operate from their stakeholders as uh, the biggest risk factor in their business. 11 of the top 30 companies, that's almost, that's over a third, have implemented plans to hit zero net em emissions and others are following along. Efforts to decarbonize and reduce the environmental impact are, are accelerating focus towards end user supply chain. So how do we go about this? As part of efforts to decarbonate, uh, decarbonize a wider chain supply, Lubricants have a role to play in supporting the mining industry's push to sustainable products. Environmentally acceptable lubricants can help companies achieve a balance that improves environmental impact without the need of a drop of output um, and EALs can improve the total cost of ownership. With a biodegradable lubricant, sites can push their sustainability goals further and strengthen their license to operate. For example, in the case of a spill of conventional oils, Companies can face huge financial fines uh, and costs and reputation, uh, also reputational costs where EALs demonstrate sustainability. When every contribution of cutting uh, the industry CO2 emissions count, biodegradable lubricants are part of an array of tools that sites can use to achieve decarbonization. Biolubricants can also reduce carbon footprint of operations and help achieve the goal of reducing emissions and finding a carbon neutral uh, footprint. Construction, by, by 2050, nearly 70% of global population will live in cities. Global construction industry is expected to grow by 30, 35% through 2030. Global green building material market is set to, set to reach 425.4 billion uh, within seven years. To date, 100 companies, 28 cities, six states and regions have signed into the affordable clean building for net zero carbon buildings commitment. Uh, currently 55% of the world's populations live in this city and will rise to almost 70% by 2050. Green building material market is set to reach 425.4 billion by 2027. So green construction is becoming more and more important from a variety of different factors. So how can biodegradable lubricants help? Well, when it comes to performance, uh, lubricants can play a role in driving equipment efficiency and all important reliability. Lubricants can help reduce or help increase the overall efficiency of operations and by keeping the equipment running smoothly, improve the total cost of ownership. Using environmentally acceptable lubricants provides an effective way for companies to operate near environmentally sensitive areas to manage their impact on the local ecosystems. Low ecotoxicity and no bioaccumulation, they can offer protection for soil and groundwater uh, or offer greater protection for soil and groundwater than conventional lubricants. This means that spills are far less damaging, both to the environment and to the company involved, helping them to avoid harm to their reputation 
and protecting their license to operate. EALs can also offer uh, contribute, uh, con contribute to voluntary emissions targets with formulations containing a high percentage of renewable and sustainably, sustainably sourced materials. Um, in addition, uh, sustainable packaging and avoiding uh, emissions, uh, making offsets uh, to it a carbon neutrality through the use of the lubrication. Agriculture and forestry, by 2050, the rising population means that more than 2 billion more people will need to be fed. The overall food demand will be increased by 60%. Um, and also we're expecting a quadruple for demand for wood. Wood is a sustainable and renewable resource, but it takes a long time to get a new oak tree to, to grow from a seedling. Rising posterity, prosperity is also changing tastes, boosting demand for animal-based products, fruit and vegetables, sustainable building materials, pulp and paper, base goods and, and packaging, and wood for bioenergy. Um, more recently, we've seen wood products increase in cost by over seven, sevenfold. Meeting this ever growing demand requires increased productivity with more efficiency and responsible operations. So how do biode biodegradable lubricants help? Using biodegradable lubricants enables operators to further improve their environmental impact through elements as such as carbon neutral products and reduce plastic waste. EALs can provide greater protection for sensitive environments than conventional lubricants. A readily biodegradable product with a low aquatic ecotoxicity and no bioaccumulation, they can reduce the impact of le leaks and spills along with the cost of cleanup and perhaps even avoiding far, uh, fines. Far, for farmers, this means avoiding damage to soil and water, preventing issues for crops, and helping maintain yields. For those in forestry, it protects local ecosystems, including plants and wildlife, and helps companies to meet cert certification requirements uh, for the FSC and the PECF, both of which require the use of biodegradable lubricants. Environmental protection policies are being tightened year upon year, which could see us replacing mineral oils uh, with environmentally acceptable biodegradable lubricants, which have no impact on the environment and ecology. Power. Uh, 2020 was a record year for wind power uh, installations despite COVID-19. Um, 93 gigawatts of, of new capacity was installed, a 53% year-on-year increase with global uh, cumulative wind power capacity reaching 743 gigawatts. The current capacity avoids over 1.1 billion met tons of CO2 annually, equivalent to South America's annual carbon emissions. Offshore wind is also gaining share. By 2025, the annual installations are set to quadruple. 21% of new wind installations will be off offshore as compared to 6.5% uh, in 2020. Wind share of the global power mix must increase from 6% to 30%. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that number is, um, but I'm gonna say by 2050 to achieve Paris, uh, Paris Agreement targets. In 2016, roughly two thirds of global greenhouse emissions were linked to the processing of energy for heating, electricity, transportation, and industry. So how can biodegradable lubricants help? Whether in the wind farm installation equipment, the transformers or the turbines themselves, EALs designed for specific applications can help protect critical equipment, reducing the risk of unplanned downtime. This then enables operators to drive the reality and the overall performance of their equipment. Biodegradable lubricants will also offer an effective way for operators to meet their sustainability targets by providing protection for an installation uh, local environment, either onshore or offshore. EALs can also help operators to meet voluntary decarbonization targets as part of their wider sustainability efforts. 
EALs help them to strengthen their license to operate, to reach, at reach ambitious net zero targets where industry needs to achieve. Powerful biodegradable lubricants offer an effective way for operators to meet their sustainable sustainability targets by providing greater protection for an installation uh, local environment, again, both onshore and offshore. In marine, the world trading fleet now ex exceeds over 60,000 vessels and the maritime trade is expected to continue to grow uh, at 3.4% through 2024. Shipping accounts for about 2.7% of uh, CO2 emissions. Uh, the, in the IMO, the International Maritime Organization's ambition is a reduction of 70% of carbon uh, by 2050. Many multinationals aim to decarbonize their uh, supply chain and an effort to reduce environmental impact are increasing. The United States EPA Vessel General Permit mandates the use of environmentally acceptable lubricants, EALs, in all oil to water interfaces and vessels in US waters. And EALs are strongly preferred in Europe as well as Australia. So how do biodegradable lubricants help? The IMO's aim to, reach, to achieve a 70% reduction in carbon intensity by 2050. In many regions, EALs are an essential part of maintaining the license to operate. In other, there are requirements with legislation, legislation, legislation mandating their use. The Vessel General Permit, VGP, is an example of this in action, requiring vessels longer than 79 feet that travel in US water to use environmentally acceptable lubricants, which are biodegradable, have low ecotoxicity and no bioaccumulation in all their oil to sea interface. This demonstrates the need for companies to look beyond the fuel they are using for their sustainability gains. While it is essentially critical for specialists special vessels that carry and operate heavy equipment, such as those used in offshore wind applications. By using biodegradable lubricants, vessels are not, able, not only able to improve their equipment protection, but also reduce greenhouse gases. Um, they can also strengthen their license to operate, work with uh, stakeholders around the world and show their commitment to protecting the marine environment and sensitive ecosystems. As legislation continues to tighten, it is likely that growing demand will propel a surge in technological process, producing environmentally acceptable lubricants that outperform today's conventional lubricants. So when you're looking at an environmentally acceptable lubricant, what is it that you need to see? Well, looking at the checkoff list, the first thing and top of the list is always biodegradability. Biodegradable lubricants already offer companies a solution to balance productivity with environmental protection. And you could imagine um, how the test results are. In addition to biodegradability, EALs have come a long way and now de deliver performance levels comparable or superior to conventional fluids. Regulatory requirements with legislation tightening the growing demand for EALs has propelled a surge of technological process, a progress producing EALs that not only outperform today's uh, conventional lubricants. So check out our Estelite technology that will help formulators achieve those, those goals. And finally, there's unification in terms of certification. Um, are products eco-label? Do they meet the bio-preferred requirement? which ones are most important for my market and my application. So what are we looking for in terms of biodegradability? Well, biodegradability is a quality of a substance that is affected by the process of chemical breakdown, degradation, transformation of a, of a material caused by organisms or their enzymes into carbon dioxide and water. Substance, substances are tested are subjected to testing using populations of mixed microorganisms, including bacteria from natural water and soil. Water, sunlight, and oxygen are needed for optimum aerobic biodegradation to occur. Such tests include the ASTM uh, D 5864, which is a standard test method for determining aerobic aquatic biodegradation of lubricants. The widely used 
OECD 301B modified STERM tests um, for the OECD and the EPA 56 stroke 6 82 uh, 003, the shake flask task, test, which is used by the US uh, Environmental Protection Agency. In order to pass ready biodegradation or to be readily biodegradable, a minimum 60% de degradation of a substance must occur in a 20 day incubation period. Mineral or petroleum oils may have inherent biodegradability, but that means that in 28 days, only 25 to 60% of the spill may have been biodegraded. One of the important things is to choose the right product for the right application, depending on the needs and the, and the application. So for example, if there's very limited chance of leaking, then petroleum works perfectly well as a lubricant um, that offers good performance, does not offer uh, good biodegradability, can offer good hose and seal compatibility, but does have limited environmental benefits. HETG, which are triglycerides or vegetable-based oils, are very, very good uh, when the application is light duty, low temperatures, short change out intervals. Uh, they offer great biodegradability. They have mixed performance in terms of hose and seal compatibility. They have okay um, water tolerance, but can degrade when they get hot and when they get wet. HEPGs are polyglycols. Normally they're, they're light duty application. Um, they work well when there's a potential for higher uh, fire hazards and are especially good when the system has been derived, designed around them from the get go. One of their weaknesses is that they do not work well with conventional petroleum oils or conventional hose and seal materials. So the system has to be designed specifically for that application. The HEES, which is the largest group of environmental products, which are the synthetic esters, offer a range of, of performances. They work very, very well with good oxidative stability if they can be kept dry. But traditional esters typically have very weak water test uh, tolerance or have very limited hydro hydrolytic stability. HEPR are the PAO and related products. They all offer great applications in terms of heavy duty when there's a change of contamination from petroleum and or water. They tend to be very expensive but can show a cost of ownership by having extended oil change in both. And estylides, which are secondary esters, uh, offer a wide range of heavy duty applications, um, can offer excellent water tolerance and good oxidative stability, have demonstrated excellent seals and hole com uh, hose compatibility, and some of the estylides actually meet the ready biodegradation standards. So what's the regulatory landscape look like? We've talked briefly about the vessel general permit 2013, which is done by the US EPA. Um, it was supposed to be updated, I think it was 2018 or 19. That has been pushed off, but there's the new, uh, the VITA respect that is still under consideration. Uh, for my money, the single largest um, uplift in the environmental lubricant market has been the vessel general permit, followed by the um, USDA bio preferred which mandates uh, the use of bio agriculturally based products, bio based products uh, in uh, federally, federal agencies and federal fleets in the United States. And then there's a variety of other ones. I guess I'd be remiss in not mentioning the European Eco Label, which is another major driver of environmental products. But as I mentioned before, uh, the landscape is ever changing. Uh, requiring higher and higher levels of not only environmental performance, but also the performance of the lubrication, um, uh, performance of lubrication in their application. The US, uh, the EU Eco Label no longer requires bio based content. That was a requirement some time ago, um, but that's no longer required. However, it does mandate that if you're going to use the term bio based or bio lubricant, it must have a minimum. 25% uh, bio-based content in the final product. And it must be tested by the ASTM 6866, 
can, now, can no longer be calculated. Palm kernel oil or palm oils must be attained, obtained from sustainable sources. Um, and the LUST list will be uh, adopted or adapted to the new criteria. Uh, when the new eco label came in, they completely wiped out the LUST list and started again from, uh, from scratch. So some of the major benchmarks of environmental products um, uh, within the eco label, it breaks it down into accidental loss lubricants, partial loss lubricants, total loss lubricants, and greases. And each of the categories has a different amount that re that's required of whether it's readily um, or ultimately biodegradable. There's some level of inherently biodegradable, as I men mentioned before, an inherently biodegradable product is somewhere measured between 20% biodegradable and 60% biodegradable. So in the European eco label, some of the, some of the formulation is allowed to be inherently biodegradable. And then there's below 20% by the OECD 301B, which would be non-bioaccumulative, but non-biodegradable, so it's less than 20%, but also non-bioaccumulative. And you see that you can have amounts depending on the application, ranging between less than 5% to less than 15% increase. And then finally, if the amount is non bio the element is non-biodegradable and non-bioaccumulative, it's got to be minimal amounts less than 0.1%. I had mentioned the US EPA vessel general permit and how important it is, a major driver commercially and technically. It mandates the use of environmentally acceptable lubricants in all oil to sea interfaces. That means thrusters, stern tube, stabilizers, many propulsion systems. And it very clearly defines uh, an EAL as, a, as a, a lubricant that is biodegradable, exhibits low toxicity to aquatic organization, or has a very low propensity or potential for bioaccumulation. I discussed very briefly the USDA Bio Preferred Program, which is charged with transforming the marketplace for bio-based products and creating jobs in rural America. It's supposed to help facilitate the development and the expansion of markets for bio-based products. It is a federally mandated affirmative purchasing program, as well as a voluntary labeling, labeling initiative. As of May of 2018, there were about 14,000 products in the program and under seven major sectors, agriculture and forestry, biorefining, bio-based chemicals, enzymes, bio-based plastics and packaging, forestry products and textiles. One of the most amazing uh, effects of the Bio Preferred program was it stimulated jobs and economic growth. Um, the total contribution to the bio-based product industry to the US market was over four, $469 billion, adding four and a half million workers. And if you study economics, uh, and I teach economics, you can find that the bio-based uh, industry supports 1.7 jobs in other sectors for every job that it creates. So the number of people employed was over uh, 4.65 million generating almost $460 billion to the economy and utilizing a jobs multiplier of 2.78. And what's really amazing to me is that uh, it's affected uh, many workers globally and not just in the rural environment. The Euro Red 2, which is uh, the overall renewable energy uh, the European Eco Label or the European uh, Union has targeted uh, an increase of overall renewable energy of 32% by 2030. It has set limits of 7% of blending of conventional food based bio lubes, as well as blending, as well as increasing uh, blended amounts by 4.1%. Uh, biofuels, conventional biofuels that are in the market right now must must compete with other forms of renewable transportational engine, uh, new transport energy, one more time, transport energy, and current imports of biodiesel um, and potentially bioethanol are a threat to their local domestic market. 
Uh, based on readiness of the technology um, and the double counting factors, biofuels produced from waste, fats, and oils have the best outlook for future expansion on the shorter term. Red 2 has set very ambitious goals for biofuels produced from cellulosic feedstocks, but so far commercial production of these advanced biofuels has been fairly limited. The US, the EU market for wood pellets is expected to be to grow from 2018 to two, at the same rate from 2018 through 2020, but further expands, expansion could be limited by individual member states and their sustainability um, requirements. So I pushed a lot of information through in a very short period of time. Um, I'm available for questions, but sort of the conclusions that we have is selecting the right environmentally acceptable lubricant for your application is critical. Um, maintenance saving pairs with quality lubricants, uh, proactive oil conditioning monitoring can help reduce downtime, reduce environmental or reduce maintenance costs and thereby improve overall costs. Utilizing longer oil drain intervals can help reduce the amount of oils and filters that are disposed, cutting costs and reducing environmental impact. Um, reducing environmental impact by using carbon neutral lubricants can also help protect your reputation, improve safety and environmental impact, which are vital elements in strengthening the license to operate, which is the number one concern of many industrial leaders. Spills are expensive, both in terms of fine and reputation as well as in terms of remediation and the cost to the environment. The cost of an EAL is a small price to pay in comparison. Regulatories uh, requirements are changing all the time. And I can assure you that over the span of many decades, I have never seen regulatory requirements become less so. So I appreciate everybody coming and spending their lunchtime with me. Um, I know you had a lot of things you could be doing. So I'd like to uh, give a few minutes to address some of your questions and see if I can provide you with any further information. Debbie, do we have any questions out there? No questions were posted. If you have any questions, feel free, free to unmute yourself to post your question. And if there are no questions, that's fine too. You can email Mark. You saw his um, email address there. So feel free to post an email to him directly. I will also give you a generic email where you can send any questions that you may have um, anonymously, obviously. And if there are no other questions, then I wish everybody the great rest of your day. Thank you for your time today. Enjoy your lunch if you haven't had it yet. And if there's anything that we or Biosynthetic can do for you, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Thank you, everybody.